for that conversation, that I don't want you to hide from there and, and not know exactly what's going on. Amen. We started last week on Noah. We talked about the spiritual aspects of Noah, but today I'm going to take a little different approach. Uh, I'm not a doomsday, a doomsday preacher, uh, but I do believe in the Bible. So you won't hear me talk about, oh, March 21st or, or, or like next week is Jesus coming. You know, you won't hear that from, from this church and from me. Uh, but you will hear the Bible from me. Uh, and, and the things that are happening or that are happening in Noah, uh, I believe is happening in our time. And we need to open our ears to the story of Noah and, and look at what God was doing through Noah and expressing the grace of God upon Noah's life at that time and understand where we're at, where we're at in line with what the Bible says. Amen. So if you have your Bibles with you, can you turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1? Turn to the book of Genesis chapter 1. Lord, I love your word. Uh, chapter 6, I'm sorry. Lord, I love your word. It is bread to me. It is life to me. It is light to my path and a lamp unto my feet. Thank you, God, because with it I make sound decision. My life is better by it. We thank you because I find salvation in your word and let me love it. Let me love your word every day. Let me read it uh, to benefit my soul for a man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth, O God. And we're going to bless you. Verse 1 of Genesis chapter 6, and it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is also flesh. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. Now, when you look at 120 years, back in the days, they were living like 900 years. So this demotion of chronology of man is like telling one of us or us that we're now going to live instead of 70 or 80 years, we're going to live 10 years only. That's the kind of difference we're talking about here. And there were giants in the earth in those days. Also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually, and repented the Lord that he had made man on earth, and it grieved them at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repents me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Everybody say, Noah found, grace. Noah found grace. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was just a man perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God, and Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all the flesh corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us an opportunity here. Thank you for those of us that have come. And I pray our ears will be open to hear what your word will declare to us. I pray, God, our hearts will be ready to so receive this word. And, and do that. Worship and praise, TV, that info. We're talking about Noah. And the question is, what can God do with a nobody who obeys him? wholeheartedly and uh, it, we, we spoke we started with Noah conversation the conversation about Noah last week and how that God saw Noah and he obeyed God and no matter what was going on no matter if he had seen uh, rain before a flood before and, and never heard what an ark is he obeyed God's voice <clears throat> and that's one of the things that we have to look at Noah when when studying Noah we're talking to somebody about Noah uh, it's not as Hollywood portrayed him uh, it, it is it is just one man listening to the voice of God in fact uh, this guy was was not anyone special outside of the fact that he was the the righteous man at that time. He was perfect, the Bible says, in his generations at that time. He was the only one standing for God in a world that was walking away from God. It took about 10 generations almost from Adam all the way to Noah. And you find 
from, from a place where God was intimate with man to now man is totally disinterested in God. <clears throat> and it, and it, it's a short period of time, maybe a few hundred years, uh, or maybe a thousand or so years, from the time Adam was to the time Noah was, and man just wholesale just gave up on God and just followed their own desire. But God was so gracious that he made Noah an end-time preacher of God's grace in the midst of impending judgment. One of the things that we want to establish is that God will not judge the righteous along with the wicked. God will not judge the righteous along with the wicked. But he's so gracious that God didn't just look at the earth and say, you know what, this whole place is a mess. Let me just destroy it. He looked at one man and he said, you know what, I'm going to save this man and anybody else that would hear him as he preached. That was the grace of God that was upon Noah's life. And God's grace was extended to Noah. In fact, the book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 said, By faith Noah, being warmed by God about things not yet seen, in reverence prepared an ark for the salvation of his household, by which he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. God's grace extended to Noah here because the book of Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 said, Lord, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Verse 11 says, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and the earth was filled with violence and God saw the earth and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on earth. I'm not exactly sure what was happening here during the time of Noah, but I could, I could imagine what was happening in that time. I'm not sure what it was, but I could imagine it because in the book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 37, all the way to verse 39, the Bible says, as were the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days which were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah and to the ark and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall be the coming of the son of man i'm not sure if you know but when jesus ascended to heaven he, the angels pronounced that he was going to return in the midst of those 500 people that were looking up to heaven in the book of acts chapter one the bible records that angels said why do you look up to heaven know that the same jesus that ascended will come again in the clouds of glory that's the plan of God is to come back again and and the reason in fact the reason why God sent his Holy Spirit and told his disciples to go into the upper room or to Jerusalem and wait for the promises on high because he was going to send his spirit because he was going to transform their lives and they were going to be messengers of God for the generation that was coming and just like Noah Noah was the lone the lone righteous man speaking to a group of people, to a nation, to a, to, 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 to a mass of people about an impending doom, about a flood that's coming. Of course, nobody had seen a flood before. Nobody had seen a rain before. Could you imagine what they were thinking at that time? They must have been thinking, this guy is nuts. He's out of his rocker. He's an old man. He's about 600 years old when he got into the, the ark. So he was about, you know, 500 or so years old when he started making that. So he, this guy is, is, is a crazy nut. He, he, he's got too much. Uh, he's, 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 been, he's been on the earth for too long. He's going crazy. He's going senile. They don't know what senile was back then. They don't know what dementia was back there, but I'm sure that's what they would have said. And he was just nuts. He's here building this ark. He says, God told him about this ark, and he's just crazy. He's telling us he's going to flood. There's a door. He said, come in, come in, come in. And it was just strange and wild and you're thinking well when the animals started gathering of the ark you would think well something's going on here well at that time people didn't understand yet how the animals were acting and all these different things so it might have just been a phenomenon to them maybe they were still walking around with animals and stuff like that and and maybe they didn't understand i mean i mean think about the times when the tsunami happened uh, over there in indonesia and all the animals began to go up up uphill what did the people do they went down and down to the beach Right, you've seen those videos where, where the animals and the fishes were all 
flopping around in the beach and the water had receded 100 meters into the, the ocean and people are looking around looking at starfishes going ah and throwing it to the water like hey is there something wrong here the water is over there and, 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 and the, the beach is over there there's something wrong we're just stupid so I could just imagine all these animals gathering around the ark and they're like, wow, how did Noah do that? That's strange. And, 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 and Jesus, the Bible says he's going to return. He's going to return as a king, as a ruler, as a judge. That's his second coming. The first coming came when he went in a manger, uh, when, when he came uh, as a baby in a manger. But now he's coming as a king on a horse. Now that's strange for some people. It's like king and a horse coming in the clouds. What are you talking about, John? Well, that's the kind of conversation that Noah was talking about. Well, Jesus compares the last days as the days of Noah. So our day as compared to the days of Noah. Here's, here's our day as compared to the days of Noah. Number one, the wickedness of man was great on earth. The wickedness of man was great on earth, isn't it? Isn't that something we could say now? I mean, think about it just this week. Here in Staten Island, a Chinese delivery man was lured to a corner. Robbed and killed, 50 years old. Had nothing to do with anything. Just wickedness. Right? You have... <clears throat> You have a 20-year-old today, 21-year-old, my, my sister-in-law, had gone to a funeral for a 21-year-old that overdosed with drugs or in drugs. These drug dealers have no concern. They want their money. They're, they're greedy. Everything is about money. Everything is about gaining wealth. Everything is about themselves. The wickedness of man is great they continue on the Bible says uh, uh, that the imaginations of man man's heart was evil continually the, 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 the greatest industry the, the most money-making industry in the internet now is, is pornography There are people that are devising evil continually. It is in their hearts and in their minds. Continual evil in this day and age. Verse 11, chapter 6, Genesis. The Bible says, the earth is corrupt and filled with violence. The word corrupt that's being used there means it's trash. And it's filled with violence. Uh, you know, we, 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 we hear it all the time. In small cities, in big cities, there's violent crimes everywhere. People are just deadly with force, and you know they, they're wanting us to. They're wanting to take our guns away, and, and but and, and because it's under law, and so we give our guns to the, to the the government. But the, the 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 wicked people don't have law. They don't care about the law. You. They don't care about that. The, there is violence everywhere. We, re, we hear it in our news. We, 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 we hear it from our friends. We read it on our timelines on Facebook and our social media timelines. And we see that the world is violence. In fact, our own entire circles of friends, we talk about it. Whether or not you're in church, whether or not your friends are believers, they talk about how corrupt the world is. Governments are corrupt. People are corrupt. Businesses are corrupt. In this day and age, that the same thing happening in the days of Noah are happening now. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to verse, verse 5, and then we jump to verse 13. This also know that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves. Selfie, hashtag. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. My God, they got every, you know, they got the pucker, 
a selfie. They've got the sucking spaghetti selfie. They got every type of selfie. You would know people are so enthralled about themselves. It, there's a young lady that dropped her phone in Manhattan and she tried to reach and she got stuck in, in, in the grate in Manhattan and people instead of helping her walked around and took their video, took their phone and took video and, photo and, and pictures of this woman. There are fights that are happening and instead of breaking it up people are taking pictures. Recording it on their devices. You're talking about a people that do not care about their neighbors. They're lovers of themselves. It's the last days. The Bible says, in the last days, it's going to be covetous. They want what you have. Kids walking around, brand new, brand new sneakers, getting killed for those sneakers. Uh, you know, that's what thiev is, thievery is all about. It's getting what, your, what is not yours because you want it to be yours. Boasters. There's some people that boast about something that they shouldn't. You, sometimes you wonder, why are you boasting, bro? You haven't done nothing. Proud. Blasphemers. The, blasphemers, they're just, they're just talking bad about God. They're talking about bad about things they do not know. Blaspheming God up and down. They're talking about Jesus. The, 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 I mean, Noah for the movie. Just blaspheming God's word. They, 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 they don't care about God. Disobedience to par disobedient to parents. Come on now. I got this 18-year-old uh, girl, 17-year-old girl suing her parents. Did you hear about that one? Suing her parents because they had kicked her out. So she went to sue them because she wants to get paid for college and all these different things. And the parents had stopped giving her this stuff because she had been a, 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 a brat. Disobedient to parents, it's happening. Unthankful. Come on, anybody has opened a door for somebody and they look at you like you're working for them? Right? You go into the city, city bus and you don't want to get up anymore for anybody because when you get up, they look at you like, about time. Right? It's rampant in our society. Unholy. Just, just, just no holiness. There's no sense of separation. There's no sense of morality. In fact, if you talk about morality nowadays, you look like you have two heads. You raise your children with values and morals and do's and don'ts, and, and parents look at you like, what's wrong with you? You have kids in the park doing their thing with other kids and, and hurting other kids, and you, you want to stop it, and the parent's going to come and beat you up. Heard even here in Staten Island, this grandfather came and beat up this man's uh, th this man because he had stopped uh, the, the 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 grandson uh, uh, of this man to to stop hurting his son. He just he just put his hand on him to keep him away. The next day he gets beat up in the in the schoolyard. It's a society we live in. Uh, am I saying something that, that you do not know? And look at this. The Bible continues on. It says, verse 3, without natural affection. Now, this, this, this puts me in a limelight here. Because every time you talk about these things, you, you're speaking hate language. But the Bible says in the last days, people are not going to have natural affection. You know what's natural affection? For me to like a woman. And for a woman to like a man. That's natural. For a man to... For a grown man to like another grown person. And for me not to like an animal. That's unnatural. People have no natural affection anymore. And that's okay. My God, the, 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 there, there's a group that is trying to lobby. Uh, uh, there's a group of old men and middle-aged men that are trying to lobby. And, and say that, hey, it's still a preference if I, want to, if I want to sexually entice a younger boy. That's my preference. Hey, if the homosexuals can do it, I should be able to do it. That's the kind of slippery slope that we're going down on. 
And, and look, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying these are natural affection. They're just natural. I love what the Bible says. It doesn't say evil affection. It says without natural affection. Truce breakers. You don't know who's your friend anymore. False accusers. People lying about you and you're just like, what's going on? Incontinent, the word incontinent there means no control, no self-control. People going anywhere they want to, saying anything. They, they have no gate on their mouth. I heard, I heard uh, Rick Warren say this. I read Rick Warren say this, that God has made our mouth to close and our ears to stay open. Like, people have no gate in my Well, I'll just say whatever it is I say. No, not everything you say should be said. Not everything you feel should be made known. Just because you, you, you feel it doesn't mean somebody needs to hear it. Learn how to close your mouth. Learn how to have self-control. Learn if anger is boiling up inside of you, you don't have to yield to that anger. Paul writes to Titus and he says there, I kept you in Crete, the book of Titus, chapter 1. He said, I... I, I, I I made you to stay in Crete, even though Crete, the Cretans are all crazy, not, not people, and they're evil, and they're wicked. I kept you in there because you need to put things in order. You know what, what's happening in our day now? People have no order in their lives. Just no order. And there's an importance for us believers to be those people that take a hold and take the mantle of discipleship and take the mantle of Christ and help people to put their lives in order. You, it's important for us to gather in this house because nobody is talking about order. They're not talking about it in our schools anymore because you can't talk about morality in school anymore. Teachers can't tell how your children should live anymore. It's, it's no longer that. You, you, it's, it's, it's whatever it is, whatever it is, is good for you, is good for everybody else. You can't, talk about, uh, you, you, you can't talk about anything good. You can't talk about any type of morality, any type of, 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 of type of boundaries for living lives. People say, well, it's archaic. This is old. This is old. You're a Bible believer. You're, learn you're talking about archaic stuff. No, these are not archaic stuff. This is God's stuff. Amen. The only reason why it's archaic to you, because we're in the last days. This is what you're going to do. The Bible says here, high, they're high-minded. They're, tra they're, they're traitors. They're heady. You know what heady is for me? I think for me, a heady person is one that feels like they're entitled to stuff. Like, you're entitled. I mean, there are people, you know, we, we as the church here, and praise God that we've been able to do it. And hopefully the Lord will increase uh, our resources that we can do it more and more. We've helped people. And we want to help people. But sometimes you just don't have the measure and don't have the means to do it. And people think, what's wrong with you? Aren't you the church? No. We don't owe you anything. We owe you nothing but love because that's what Jesus has given us. If we can do it, we'll, we'll do it. Have you ever done anything for anybody and then when you can't do it anymore, all of a sudden it's expected from you? And they make you out to be the evil one. I've been trying to help you. I can't do it this time. How wicked are No. Something's up with you. It's the end time. I'm not surprised by it. It's written in the word of God. So I don't get, get flustered when people act like people. When people act like they're a mess. When people act like they have no social morality. When they, they have no boundaries. I, it's in the word of God. Come on child of God. You shouldn't be surprised yourself. Some of you get surprised. Some of you get angry. Some of you get angry at unbelievers or even believers. Don't be angry about this stuff. You know already it's happening. Just be like God you're coming soon. Don't get stressed over people stressing you. Don't allow people to do that. You just lift up your hands and say, you know what? I've got to have the extension of God. One dwelleth righteousness. Listen, there was only one door in the ark. And there's only one door in the church. There's only one door in the ark. And there's only one door in the church. Jesus said, I am the door.
John 10 verse 9 says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Acts 16, 30, 31, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved in your house. Listen, why, why, why present Jesus to you? Why should I even believe this Jesus to be true? Well, the word of God shows to us that it's true. History had declared him to be true. But if you don't believe me, I want to present to you somebody that you may believe to the scriptures for poetic truth, um, as well as the sort of historical stuff I'm, I'm, I'm in, interested in. And of course, there was a histor historical Jesus. No, I'm talking about God. Oh, right. And, and do well, you, I see I'm, the, the, per the person of Christ is my way to understand uh, God. Do you pray? Yes. To whom or what do you pray? To and Christ. In way? To Christ. Yeah. And, and what do you pray for? I pray to get to know um, the will of God, because then the prayers have more chance of coming true. I mean, that's the thing about prayer, isn't it? I mean, we don't do it in a very lofty way in our family. There's just a bunch of us on the bed, usually. We have a very big bed in our house. And all our, we've prayed with all our kids. We, we you know, we just, we, we read the scriptures, we pray. It's not even regular. Sometimes if we go to church on a Sunday, we go when the church has ended and we'll just go in on our own as a family. For peace and quiet. For and peace and quiet. And we'll pray usually about people that we know who are struggling with something, um, illness so, or so whatever. So then what or who was Jesus as far as you're concerned? I think it's, the, it's a defining question for a Christian is who was Christ. And, and I don't think you're let off easily by saying a great thinker or a great philosopher or, a, you know, because actually he went round saying he was the Messiah. That's why he was crucified. He was crucified because he said he was the Son of God. So he either, in my view, was the Son of God or he was not. No, no, nuts. Nuts, yes. Forget yes. rock and roll messianic complexes. This is like, I mean, Charlie Manson type delirium. And I find it hard to accept that all the millions and millions of lives, half the earth for 2,000 years, have been touched, have felt their lives touched and inspired by some nutter. I just, I don't believe it. I, so I therefore it follows that you believe he was divine. Yes. And therefore it follows that you believe that he rose physically from the dead. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, I have no problem with miracles. <laughs> I'm living around them. I am one. So, so when you pray then, you pray to Jesus. Yes. The risen Jesus. Yes. And you believe that he made promises which will come true. Yes. Jesus made promises that I believe will come true. And he said this, he said, let your heart be not troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me, for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you so. But I go and prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mark 16, 16 said, He who has believed and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who has disbelieved shall be condemned. Jesus is not condemning people. The church is not condemning people. We're not doing that. People are condemning themselves. When you disbelieve, you've condemned yourself. And so what are we to do? Won't you believe in the Son of God? Believe in the Son of God. That's it. You don't have to figure out anything. You don't have to go and climb a mountain and seek it out on top of a high mountain. You don't have to beat yourself every day and try to figure out what 
God wants for you. You don't have to, you don't have to kneel on the floor and put yourself in mud and have piercings all over your body, having people pulling on those piercings so that you can be redeemed of your sins. You don't have to do any of that stuff. All you have to do is believe in the Son of God, that He loves you, that He died for you. Won't you stand to your feet? Are you here and you have not given your life over to Jesus Christ? Maybe you've had religion, but never had relationship with God. Maybe you have not confessed with your mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords and King of kings. I want to encourage you to make that commitment today. Why don't you confess, Lord, I believe in you. God, I don't, I'm not believing in you because I want to get away from the fire that's coming. Not because I'm scared, but because you're extending grace to me. The door is wide open. It's funny because there were no tolls in front of Noah's Ark. If Noah was a governor of New York, there'd be a toll there. It was wide open. In fact, in the last seven days before Noah went into the ark, or before, before the ark closed, Noah was inside the ark already. Seven days is a number of God. God is patiently waiting for you.